Hi there, I'm Isaac Garcia, the Director of Adult Evangelization and Catechesis at St. Ignatius Martyr Catholic Church in Austin, Texas, and welcome to our very first Lenten Mission at Home video. Each Monday, we'll share a video reflecting on the previous Sunday's Gospel in light of our experience in the pandemic, which is now almost a year old. So, let's get to it. In this week's Gospel, Jesus spends 40 days in the desert being tempted by Satan and living among wild beasts. But before he reappears to tell us to repent and believe, something remarkable happens. Angels minister to Jesus. And it's easy to skip over the angel's presence to Jesus because we often focus on what Jesus does by going into the desert or on what Jesus says when he tells everyone to repent and believe. But here's where we'll focus right now. Even Jesus needed healing and comfort. Y'all, We've remained in the desert of this pandemic for more than 40 days, for more than 40 weeks, for almost an entire year. That's a lot of time to be in the desert. So we're bound to need some ministering ourselves. But what about Jesus? What did he do? Well, after the 40 days, let's imagine Jesus talks with the angels about what happened. Because talking helps and is essential for healing at a very human level. In the course of the conversation, Jesus might point out physical and psychological mental and emotional and spiritual wounds that he suffered, and the angels would listen and minister to those places of Jesus' pain, applying healing balm and spreading salve to strengthen him for his day-to-day post-desert life. By sharing his wounds, Jesus receives healing and comfort. I know I could use some healing balm, some relief in my day-to-day life right about now. I have two toddlers asleep right now as I record this on Sunday evening. Early in the pandemic, I stepped away from my work to care for them full-time as childcare dried up. Having the library, the park, family gatherings, and all forms of babysitting go out the window overnight left me wounded, and I still feel that wound deepening with no immediate relief in sight. Thankfully, my oldest is at our St. Ignatius school um, now, and and we have a good childcare situation for my youngest, which has allowed me to work here. But all it takes is one COVID case, and Poof. These are real wounds, real hardships, even as I count myself fortunate. I know folks who have had to leave the workforce entirely, or or others who have lost loved ones to COVID, or others who have spent months dealing with the long-term consequences, the long-term wounds from COVID. But y'all, drowning can happen in a foot of water or in 10 feet of water. A wound is a wound is a wound, no matter how deep. And sometimes when I think of my own wounds from the pandemic, I, I think not in terms of hurts that appear immediately, like if you fall and scrape a knee or if you break a bone, but I think of stress fractures, which appear after repeated use, often from pushing through something that we needed to complete over and over and over again, or the wounds that remain hidden taking place at an imperceptible level until we get the right medical test done, or the wound that has scabbed over that just rips open at the slightest additional provocation, or the calluses that develop to protect from further pain, or the blisters that appear from wearing new shoes, or, or, or. A wound is a wound is a wound. So we begin our Lenten mission at home by examining the past year and looking at our own wounds. We do this not merely to enumerate them so that others can feel sorry for us, for our pain, though empathy is valuable and and powerful as well, and very important in our own healing. No, we list our wounds to bring them to Jesus and to ask for healing. All throughout the Gospels, we and any times Jesus heals, people go to Jesus. And while we're definitely still in the desert of the pandemic, this Lent, we're invited to examine what has been from the past year, all that we've endured, all the breaking points that we've passed, all the last straws, all the relationships bent and broken, and all the real losses that we've suffered. So we too can go to Jesus and ask for healing. And so this is our task for the first week of the London mission at home. Reflect on your wounds from the pandemic. Wherever you're viewing this video, you'll see some questions to help with that. Take some time now and throughout this week ahead of us to reflect with God about the past year. Take out a piece of paper, leave it on your desk or by your bathroom sink or your alarm clock or wherever you're going to see it. Write down your wounds, your hurt, 
your losses and pain from this past year as you think about them. Set aside some time intentionally to do this. Um, list them out or write a page about each of them. Do whatever God is calling you to do. But do this and, and save this list. Save whatever you write down until next week. And we'll use what you write down um, next week in our video, which we'll share next Monday. Remember, we don't end with our wounds, but like Jesus coming out of the desert, we start there so that we can continue on our day-to-day -day life with more strength than before. And if all this exercise, everything that, that this video throughout this, this Lenten mission at home uh, surfaces anything you want to talk about, reach out to a loved one or someone here at St. Ignatius. We're all here to be those angels ministering to one another. Know of my prayers for you and your household now, during Lent and throughout the rest of the pandemic. May God be with you and may God bless you.